uh, it's the presentations Murundari's wives a study in duality in Ngurundjeri linguistics and cosmology so you can see um the photo at the bottom is Victor Harbour, where I live. Judy lives in Adelaide, and you can see on the map um, the boundary of Ngurungiri country. So at the tip of, um, of Fluria Peninsula is very close to where this picture is taken, and that's the bluff at Victor Harbour where um, Ngurundri's wives were drowned. Um, and we should also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land around Canberra, the Ngunnawal people. Now I have an issue because I've got my um, half of my slides been hidden by the toolbar. I'm not sure how to get rid of that. You can minimise that. Okay. Might get Rob to sort out how to do that. Um, so in this presentation, we'll summarise first um, our findings because I'm sure I'm going to run out of time. So we'll do the findings first. Then we'll retell the Murundri wives' dreaming narrative. Then we'll discuss the dilemma of the fate of the two wives in um, the dreaming narrative. Then we'll outline the importance of duality in the Ngurundri language and then offer an alternative um, outcome not an alternative outcome, but an alternative perception for um, the two wives. I'm still losing half of my slide. Not quite sure how to solve that problem. Um, does anyone know how to get rid of the, the menu bar at the bottom that hides the slide? Yeah, click on the three dots and go to hide floating menu item. Oh, thank you very much. Brilliant. Now I can see all of my slide. Thank you. And we'll conclude with the um, talking about the challenges of reviving a language and culture. And you can see, can you see Judy on the screen there? Hi, Judy. I want that there. Mm. Rob's just lost it for me. Okay, so the summary of our, sorry. I wanted that there. We can't necessarily see. But I got rid of the bar already. Um, so the summary of our findings and presentation is duality is an extremely important aspect of Ngurundjeri cultural life. It is in important in the dreaming narratives, in their cosmology and in everyday life and activities. This duality is very much reflected in the morphology of the language as an obligatory marking at the word and phrase level. It also has syntactic implications at the text level. Not in any dreaming narratives typically feature pairs of characters. The language demands that duality is marked. It also demands that there is no confusion within text when two characters interact. Even today, Ngurundjeri people participate in everyday life very much in pairs. The dual category in most word classes are a three-way split of subject, object, agent, but for the, not for the singular, which is just ergative versus absolutive, and the plural doesn't mark erg ergative at all. And um, dual substantives are marked you can see there on the screen. So throughout this whole presentation, all the dual marking is in red font. So you've got ENC, um, ENCORN for object and ENCOR for agent. The dual third person pronouns are marked for ergativity while plurals are not. And there's only three pronouns that mark for ergativity, which is the first person, um, third person singular and third person dual, KENCOR for um, agent. Finally, we demonstrate how duality can be marked in positive ways for the two wives as agents in the Ngurundri narrative, rather than portrayed as the victims of, the Ngurund of Ngurundri's vengeance. Now I'm just gonna try and find back. Um, I don't know how to get back to the, sorry, I'm just trying to get it so I can see things. Yeah, I want my toolbar back. Press escape. 
Oh, okay, thank you. Rob was trying to help, but he made it worse. Now. Sorry, I can't manage it, so I'll just have to go without it. Okay. I can't go to the next slide now. I'm locked onto the one slide. Sorry about this. I don't know what you've done. My slides frozen. Um, well, we oh, here it is. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is a disaster. Okay, so this is Marundri's work. Are you happy for me to read it, Judy, the Marundri narrative? Yeah. So this version will be Henry Rankin's version, and I've marked in red where duality is marked. Um, Henry Rankin's passed away. He was a senior, um, not in getting elder. Um, according to Henry, now I have to move this down. In the dreaming of the Ngurundjeri people, Ngurundjeri is the shaper of the land, laws and creatures. He could travel through time and space along rivers and hills, across lakes and seas. His mind and spirit sometimes took human shape and he travelled as a man. Um, so according to Joseph Campbell, who many of you would have heard of maybe, Ngurundjeri is what we call the archetypal hero. So for the Ngurundri dreaming and his two wives, it goes this way. The Ngurundri dreaming begins where the wide River Murray joins the River Murray. A wide River Darling joins the River Murray. Ngurundri was looking for his two wives who had run away after a quarrel. One day when he was fishing from his bark canoe, Ngurundri saw Pondi, the giant Murray cod. He tried to spear the huge fish, but Pondi the cod quickly swam away downstream. When Pondy reached Murundi, which was then just a small creek, he had nowhere to swim. So he went ploughing and crashing through the bush, making the creek into the mighty Murray River. Murundi rested near Wellington and sent a smoke signal to Raukan, where his brother-in-law Nepali lived. He gave Nepali the power to spear Pondy the giant cod. Nepali saw the cod at the place where the fresh and salt water meet and killed Pondy with his spear. Nepali put Pondi on a sandbar and waited for Murundri. They both cut Pondi up into pieces. Murundri threw each piece into the water and told it to become a new species of fish. The last piece, he said, Nun Pondi, you keep being the Murray cod. Murundri left Raukan and took his canoe eastward around the lake. One time he saw some people in the reeds and they were afraid of him and tried to hide. Murundri commanded they be changed into small birds who now live in the reeds. One night he smelled dukdri, the bony brim cooking. This fish was forbidden to women and he knew it was from the camp of his two wives who had run away long ago. This made him angry and he prepared to leave camp and find them. The two wives heard Ngurundri coming and became very frightened. They quickly made a raft of reeds and grass trees and escaped across Lake Albert. They then fled along the Kurong. Murundri followed them south until he met a man called Burrumburri close to Kingston. Murundri asked, have you seen my two women? But Burrumburri was an evil sorcerer. The two powerful men began fighting with spears, clubs and magic forces. Murundri finally killed Burrumburri with his club. Then he burnt the body to destroy its power and it changed into the huge granite boulders. During the battle, Murundri's wives slipped past and fled back along the coast, heading north. Murundri followed their footprints along the Kurong. He camped on the way, digging fresh water soaks and creating landforms as he travelled. Having lost his wives, his wives' trail, he crossed the mouth of the Murray and started towards Encounter Bay. At Middleton, he threw a huge tree into the sea, which became seaweed. At Port Elliot, his fishing net became the rocks of Pullen Island. At Victor Harbour, he made islands by throwing spears into the sea. Murundri walked to Granite Island and rested. <laughs> One day he heard a loud splashing and laughing from the direction of Kings Point and he knew it was his two wives. 
Wurundjeri threw his club to the ground and chased after them. As the club hit the ground, it became the headland called Ramong, the bluff at Victor Harbour. And that was the image I showed you on the first slide. The women ran from the water and fled along the coast towards Cape Jervis. Wurundjeri called out to them to stop, but they ran on through the shallow water towards Kangaroo Island. Standing high on the cliffs, Wurundjeri called out in a voice of thunder for the seas to rise. The seas came in wave upon wave, driving his two wives from their path. They fought until they could swim no more and drowned. Their bodies became the Pages Islands. Wurundjeri crossed the kang to Kangaroo Island where he rested, but the sound of the wind through the trees caused him to mourn his two wives. So he dived deep into the sea to prepare his spirit for the spirit world. He can be seen today as a bright star in the Milky Way. So in contrast to Joseph Campbell's book um, about a thousand heroes, um, Maria Tata in her book, The Heroine with a Thousand Faces writes, it's gradually dawned on me that heroines were habitually bent on social missions, trying to rescue, restore or fix things with words as their only weapons. Heroes by contrast are armed and ready for battle. They embark on quests and journeys, seeking glory in conflict, often military and martial. They chase down immortality more than anything else and they secure enduring fame through a process that can be described plain and simple as self-aggrandizement and self-mythologization. So what do we do in the context of reviving a language and culture when the content of a dreaming narrative is, of a dreaming narrative is unpalatable, particularly to women? So this presentation addresses some of the questions that Ngarindjeri women are asking today, as they often contemplate the negative portrayal and ill-fated outcomes of female protagonists in dreaming in Ngarindjeri dreaming narratives. In these narratives, women are destined to victimhood at the hands of powerful males. They typically appear in pairs, are portrayed as mischievous or promiscuous or lawbreakers, and are either drowned together transformed into birds together or managed to escape together from their hostile protagonists into the celestial heavens. By contrast, the ancestral heroes are male, are celebrated for their might, are often aggressive, are heralded, heralded for their earthly deeds of transforming the land and seas or creating animals and bird species and usually remembered for some commendable feats. Please chip in, Judy, when you want to. I'm kind of racing here. Um, so we will come back to this vexed issue later in our presentation. But first, we'll overview the prevalence of duality in the Ngarindiri language. So as summarised in slide four, much of Ngarindiri culture, mythology and cosmology features pairs of characters. So duality is a major feature of the language at all levels, morphologically and syntactically. At the word level, this duality is reflected in the language as an obligatory marking. So the following slides overview this marking for duality in the language. So I've marked all the duality in the red font, and I'm going to race through this because the detail um, isn't important at this stage. It's just to show the fact that it's, the language is highly marked um, for duality. So this is Duality, you can see in red for the nominative, accusative, vocative, ergative, genitive, dative. There's more duality marked for more cases on nouns. You've got the ablative, allative, locative and instrumental. And you might say, why is this a big deal? But it's the duality that's always marked. Sometimes it's not marked for um, the plural, um, but it's always marked for um, dual. Um, so duality in the pronouns is just as um, rampant. So you've got full form pronouns with dual forms. You've got bound pronouns with dual forms. You've got reflective and reciprocal pronouns with dual forms and special constructions for reciprocal. Um, more duality in the pronouns for possessive pronouns, for bound possessive, possessive pronouns, interrogative pronouns, demonstrative pronouns. And I could have had another slide just showing um, duality for the, um, the 
word class of kinship. There is a, a, a word class for kinship in Ngarangiri and but I haven't done a slide of that. So how can we make the Ngurundri narrative more palatable? Rebecca Solnit suggests that in the fairy tales from Western culture, stories of heroes and power have been enshrined. And by contrast, we dismiss stories about ordeals that require resilience, persistence, and the forging of alliances. So is it possible to rewrite the Ngurundri dreaming narrative in a positive way for women and children to hear today? And Judy can tell you better than me, but a lot of women don't actually choose to tell this story because of the fate of the women. And um, it's, it's the most important creation dreaming narrative for Ngurundri people and the most well-known one. So I'm looking at Michael White's work, who was an, um, a psychologist working in Adelaide, who's passed away now, and he's made narrative therapy a very popular therapy amongst Nungas. And he suggests that people who have troubled pasts can benefit in their therapy by rewriting their own, what he calls problem saturated life stories. He suggests that Nungas can look for more agency in their past lives and rewrite their survival stories as victors rather than victims. So here are some suggestions um, on how the plight of Ngurundri's wives could possibly be rewritten to make it more palatable. So here are some alternative words in dual form um, that we can use to describe Ngurundri's two wives. Let's look at bravery, mangandang and showing bravery, mangandangarang, and the ink at the end showing, it's two of them showing bravery. Curiosity, prandalarami, mimini. So mimini is the word for woman, so it's um, two curious women, mimini. Bildengi, meaning strong, bildengi mimini. Mongkumbuli, meaning smart, mongkumbuli mimini. Skillful and resourceful, ngaramaldi and winamaldi ink. Adventurous, Tandaipala Maldi Ink, playful, Tainko Walarumi Nupi. So Nupi is the word for wife. So it's two um, playful wives. Solidarity and togetherness. Everybody knows the word Yunti together. Strong willed, Bugatumi Nupi. So it's strong willed wives. Remembered over time, Kaldao Ngulun Mimanenkun. And here are some sample sentences that we've constructed for the rewriting of the Ngurundri narrative. So I won't read out the Ngurundri, but I will read the English. So number one, Ngurundri's two wives in the long ago, they were two curious, strong, smart, strong-willed women. They showed much bravery, poor things. Two, together, these two wives escaped from Ngurundri showing much bravery. Three, those two resourceful women, they made two reed rafts. Four, the two adventurous sisters escaped into Ramanjeri country. Five, the two playful sisters splashed in the water near the bluff. Six, together, you two helped each other with your heavy loads. So this kalparang, um, that's a well-known name that people still use in Ngarindiri, um, to help each other with your heavy load. Now, this is your bit, Judy. This is direct quote from you. Did you want to read it or um, did you want me to read it? I'm not sure where she is. I muted Judy. Not quite sure. Oops. Is Sorry. Is there a, oh, a co-host who can unmute Judy? Is that, sorry, am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah, you're unmuted mm -hmm. now. My apologies. Um, if you could read it, that would be good. Yeah. Unless you want me to just battle through. What um, would you like me to do? Do you want me to read it or would you like to? Because you're um, on I your phone, you. aren't you? Just, just go through it then. So... Uh, I, I thought long and hard about this dilemma. I have a lot of um, 
high praise for, for having access to that creation story. And this is what I've um, come up with at the end, is that uh, whilst the Nurundari dreaming ends tragically for the women, there is no indication of what might have set the chain of events into play. We don't know why they were fleeing. The women displayed their resilience, playfulness and bravery as they journeyed. The tragic end for these women leaves me a little melancholy. Nurundari could have foreseen the outcome of the rising seas, yet chose that path only to be overcome with remorse himself. And then he chose as his fate to join his ancestors as a part of the Milky Way. The Me Too movement has been a long time coming. It is a tremendous because it transfers power to women who have experienced sexual abuse or harassment and allows them to experience solidarity and begin the journey of healing. The level of suspicion leveled at Narundari regarding his reason for the pursuit and the eventual demise of his wives is interesting. In the present day, we have witnessed several instances where, whereby the level of evidence needed to determine guilt or innocence regarding abuse in a relationship is really high. It's a pity that Nurundari does not receive the same consideration. And that might be a, a, an indication of the recording process where we don't have the full story about what's happened um, in this case. So thank you for the opportunity to contribute. Thanks, Judy. And, and just remember, we were writing this paper while uh, Johnny Depp and um, Amber mm. Heard trial was on. And we all know the outcome of that with the hero, Jack Sparrow, <laughs> winning in the end. So, yeah. So there's a little slide of you, Judy, with your beautiful daughter. Mangalaki, yes. Um, yeah, and we'll remind people that the theme for reconciliation this week in uh, this year, 2022, is be brave, make change. So this is a little construction we've got. And I can really say this about Judy and her daughter, Angela, who um, Jane has met. They're two strong, smart Ngarangiri women, and together they always show bravery and they'll survive well into the future with that bravery. Yes. And I'd just like to pay tribute to um, some other strong Ngarangiri women. Um, I work with a whole bunch of strong Ngarangiri women. <laughs> yeah, so these are two very special women who founded MEPAC, which is the um, Ngarangiri Aboriginal Corporation, which was founded in Victor Harbour um, in 2002 um, by Eileen McHughes, who you can see with me on the left, and Arnie Phyllis Williams on the right. Unfortunately, Arnie Eileen's left us now, but Phyllis is still going strong. And they created MEPAC to produce or to keep Ngarangiri culture and language strong in the Fluria region. But everything we do with that organisation is shared with the whole community. We produce, you know, the dictionaries and the picture books and the dreaming narratives out there for everybody to read in Ngarangiri as part of an ARC project that Jane was very much involved with. Um, so I just conclude by saying maybe if and when these strong Ngarangiri women choose to retell the Ngurundri narrative, they will tell it from the perspective of, of Ngurundri's two wives and tell of the resilience, bravery, strength and tenacity they showed during their arduous plight. Um, there's the references, or some of them, but um, yeah, I'd just like to thank you all and thank Judy in particular for the huge effort to um, join us today because it's a working day for her. But I also want to pay tribute to Jane, and you've showed all of the um, tributes that we've given to Ngurundari's wives in your long career as a linguist and as a colleague and friend to so many people. So yeah, I thank you for that, Jane. <laughs>